Hi and welcome everyone to this lesson in our course for uh, solar energy. In this lesson we will discuss uh, more about solar panels. So first you will have to know that any panel, any solar panel, okay, it has two terminals coming from it. One which is a positive terminal and one which is a negative terminal, okay. So when you connect any of these uh, this two to for example a bulb or a resistor then a current will flow okay from a positive going to the negative terminal okay so this can be considered as a voltage source or like a battery okay okay so now you can see this is a, a junction box in which we will have the two terminals the positive and the negative now what we would like to do is that we would like to find the VI characteristics of a solar panel or VI means voltage current characteristics of a solar panel. I would like to see how does the voltage and the current looks like uh, from the panel. Okay. So first, as you can see, this figure here shows you the voltage on the X axis. We have the voltage. And we have on the Y axis, we have the current. Current in ampere and voltage uh, of the panel. So this is the output voltage from the panel. This is the output current from the panel. Okay. So let's uh, start. First, um, we have two different uh, tests that we do. One which is called the open circuit test and the short circuit test. So what does this mean? Open circuit test is that we will leave these two uh, wires opened. So positive and the negative terminals open circuit like this. Okay. Then we start adding a uh, voltmeter. A voltmeter which measures the uh, voltmeter which measures the voltage here. This voltage is known as the open circuit voltage. Okay. Or V open circuit. Okay, you can see V open circuit or the open circuit voltage. As you can see, since this circuit is opened, it means that the voltage will be equal to V open circuit, the open circuit voltage, and the current, what is the value of current? Current will be equal to zero because the circuit is opened. So we'll find that the first point here, we have the voltage V open circuit, and the corresponding value of current is zero. Okay, this is the first point here. V open circuit at which the current will be equal to zero. Okay, then the second test is that we will make a short circuit test. So we will do like this, connect these two wires together, the positive and the negative together, like this. So what do you think the voltage will be here between these two terminals? The voltage will be equal to zero. Why? Because we have a short circuit between these two wires, between the positive and the negative. Now, in this case, we will have maximum current. Current will be maximum, will be the highest value. And in this case, we say that the current itself is equal to I uh, short circuit or the short circuit current. So the voltage is equal to zero here and the current will be I short circuit here. Okay, so we have the first point, second point on the graph and the first point on the graph here. Now between these two points, I would like to find different values of current and different values of voltage. So how can we do this? Simply we, uh, we connect the panel, we have the panel like this. We have the positive and we have the negative. Okay, and we start connecting it to a variable resistor. Okay, variable resistor like this. By changing the resistance, we can obtain different values of voltage and the current. So we can uh, draw finally this curve. As you can see, this curve is called the uh, VI characteristics of a solar panel. Okay. Now, similar since we obtain the current and volt. So at any instant, let's say, for example, this voltage V1 we have the current which will be produced will be current i1 okay 
So the next thing we would like to do is that we need to find the output power of a panel. You know that the power in general is equal to V multiplied by the current or the voltage multiplied by the current. So at any point, at any point, let's say here we have V1 and we have current I1. So the corresponding power here will be this point, which is B equal to V1 I1. Here at this point, we have a voltage equal to zero and the current equal to I short circuit. So their multiplication will give us zero and so on. So you do this for different values of current and voltages like this. And in the end, you will obtain this graph, which is called the power characteristics of a solar panel or the power curve of a solar panel. Now, as you can see that this curve has a certain value at which we will have maximum power. You can see this point, which is the peak power, maximum power, P maximum, occurs at a certain value of voltage called Vm and a certain value of current called Im. Okay, so Pm, which is the peak power coming from the panel, is equal to Im multiplied by Vm. Okay, so this Vm is less than the open circuit voltage and Im is less than I short circuit. Okay, it is between zero and I short circuit and this one between zero and V open circuit. Okay, now this point at which we will get maximum power, the value of voltage and the current is called the maximum power point, MPP or the maximum power point. It is the point at which we will get the maximum power. Point on the VI curve, okay? at which we will have a certain value of voltage and certain value of current that will give us the maximum power. Now, why is this important? Because we are going to uh, control or use a um, buck converter or we are going to use a, a solar charge controller in order to control the output voltage of the solar panel so that we can always get the maximum power. As we, as we will see in the maximum power point tracking lessons, okay? Okay, now the question is, how can I know, how can I know the operating point of a solar panel? Now, for example, you have this solar cell, okay? It's a very small solar panel or a solar cell connect, connected to a bulb, for example. You can see we have the positive terminal as a, a black is a ground and we have uh, the orange one, which is a positive, and the black is a negative. Then we start connecting it here, like this, and connecting like this. So we connected our panel to the load or the pulp, okay? Now the question is, what is the output voltage and the output current of the panel in this case, okay? So I would like to know what is voltage and what is current, how can I get this? Simply, you will find that this is the characteristic, the blue line representing the characteristics of the BV panel. Okay, as you can see here. Now, in order to find the operating point, simply we draw a line which is representing the characteristics of the load. You can see this is a pulp which can be representing by a resistance. So, the resistance equal to V over I which is the slope of the line. Here, assuming that the resistance is a constant value, so we will have connecting it like this, drawing it like this, okay? So the intersection between the characteristics of the load and the characteristics of the PV panel, their intersection, which at this point, will give us the corresponding voltage and current. So as you can see at this point, we will have this voltage and we will have this uh, current here, for example, okay? Corresponding value of current. How did we get this? By simply intersecting the characteristics of the load 
with the BV panel characteristics. So the BV panel characteristics, we obtained it by doing, by connecting to a variable resistance or a variable resistor load, and then changing the value of the resistance, then measuring the current and the voltage. And for the load itself, it has a characteristic. Some loads are like this, other loads are like this, okay, and so on. So they have different characteristics. So if it is, for example, like this, then this point will be the operating point, okay? Now, we would like to understand more about panels. So we will uh, learn about the solar irradiance. So what does uh, solar irradiance mean? The solar irradiance or SI is a power pair unit area received from the sun in the form of electromagnetic radiation. So, and it is measured in watt per meter square. So as you know that um, if we have a panel like this, okay, the sun falls on it, okay? So the energy content or um, let's say power density content inside this uh, sun rays are called the solar irradiance or sometimes called the solar insulation. Solar irradiance or solar insulation, okay? Now this uh, rays or irradiance is measured in watt per meter square. As an example, we have a standard value, which is 1000 watt per meter square. Okay, this is a standard values at which we will get the data sheet for this panel. Uh, always the values given are according to this value of irradiance. Okay, um, sometimes called the STC or standard uh, conditions. Uh, this STC at a 25 Celsius degree and uh, 1000 watt per meter square radians. So for example, if you look at this panel, you will find that this panel in the market, this is from Alibaba uh, website, you will find that it is a 320 watt uh, polycrystalline solar panel. Okay, so that's 120 watt, 120 watt uh, solar panel as you can see here uh, this value of power which is the maximum power it is obtained at a temperature of 25 Celsius degree and an irradiance of 1000 watt per meter square okay so according to the solar irradiance we can have a variable output power so, for example, in order to understand um, how does a panel convert this sunlight, so I would like to um, remind you of something which we have said before. So, remember in the previous lesson, we said that um, the uh, monocrystalline or polycrystalline have different efficiencies, okay, different efficiency uh, depending on the type of the panel. So as an example, this one is in the market on Alibaba in China. This panel has an efficiency of 18%, 18% efficiency. Okay, so it converts, so 18% means it converts, converts 18% of the irradiance falling on it. Okay. Okay, and you will find here uh, in this uh, uh, essential data details, you will find here the dimensions of the panel. You will find here uh, length multiplied by width multiplied by the depth of the panel. Uh, this is in milli, milli uh, meter. Okay, millimeter. So 1,156 uh, millimeters means it is uh, 1.956 multiplied by 0.992 multiplied by 0.04 all of this meter so it means that the uh, length of the panel itself is 1.956 meters and the width of the panel is uh, 0.992 and the depth of the panel itself is how much? 
the depth is uh, 0.04 meters okay okay so here this is a lens width and depth okay now you will understand why is this important the dimensions are important to understand the efficiency part so here you will find that this type of panels has different types inside it or this model of uh, panels has different types so you can see it has from 320 to 360 p uh, between two brackets 72 what does 72 means it means it is consisting of 72 cells as you can see a number of cells in one panel 72 so as you can see this number representing how many cells okay now 320 to 360 what does this mean it's 120 means how much uh, what is the peak power okay to be more specific what is the peak power so the peak power here so first model 120 watt uh, second one 325 330 340 up to 360 so we have different panels one two three four five six six panels okay Okay, so this is the peak but maximum power that can be produced by the panels at STC conditions or standard conditions. Okay, at uh, 1000 watt per meter square, the amount of power for each meter square is 1000. Okay, remember, you'll find here the maximum operating current. This is the maximum operating current um and the maximum operating volts what does this mean these two values are the values at which we will have the um, um the what the uh, maximum power okay so in order to get the peak power this this peak power of 120 we need this value of voltage and this value of current okay now we have also the open circuit voltage as we learned before and the short circuit current of the panel and you'll find that each one of these panels have an efficiency 16.49 16.7 17 and so on this is the efficiency of conversion okay then we have finally the power tolerance from zero to plus three percent what does this mean it means that um if for example this one has a peak power of 320 watt so the power tolerance it means that uh, not all the panels are the same okay there may be a small error this error is means that from zero to three percent to plus three percent so it means that the power can be from um here 320 watt at zero tolerance up to 320 plus 120 multiplied by uh, 0 0.03 0 0.03 uh, 0 0.03 okay very small percent okay so it means that if uh, the panel is not it is not exactly 120 it can be 120 and up to 120 plus 3 percent of its value okay okay so now let's just delete this part here okay like this now i would like to prove this point so as you can see this one for example that's 140 watt okay uh, this panel has an efficiency of uh, let's delete everything first or, or leave them at, as it is now we have a 140 watt okay this is a peak power okay which occurs as a conditions of 1000 watt per meter square right okay and the model model efficiency is 17.52 percent okay so i would like to prove that this panel is actually 140 how can i do this simply you have the efficiency efficiency of converting this power into this power okay so when you multiply 1000 watt per meter square which is a sun rays falling power on the panel if you multiply 1000 by the 17 percent you will get how much watt per meter square our panel will convert into electrical energy 
So as you can see, if we take the 1000 watt per meter square, multiply it by the efficiency 0.1752, we will get 175.2 watt per meter square. So the panel itself converted from the sunlight 1000 what of the sunlight convert it to 175.2 it absorbed absorbed 17 percent or 10752 uh, 75.2 watt per meter square okay now remember this is watt per meter square there is another factor you have to know the power here what is the unit of power power is in watt so i need to convert watt per meter square into what how can i do this by multiplying by the area so what area area of this panel you can see the area is equal to length multiplied by width so we have 0.992 multiplied by 1.956 like this so we have this power multiplied it by the area so you will have 339.94 what now, if you compare this value which we obtained, it is similar to the 340 watt. Okay, so I hope the idea of the efficiency is clear for you now. Okay. Now, I would like to see what is the effect of the insulation or the irradiance on the VI curve. I would like to see uh, what is the effect of irradiance itself or how many watt per meter square on the VI curve. You will find that, um, as we said before, solar radiance, power per unit area, so from the sun, and measured in watt per meter square. Now, if we look at this uh, curve here, you will find that, let's say we started at this curve, okay? This is the value of current, and this is the value of voltage, okay? At a constant temperature. Here, the parameter which we change is the irradiance. How many watt per meter square? So this is the panel characteristics when we have a 250 watt per meter square, okay? Energy or uh, the power density coming from the sun. Now, as you increase the irradiance, as you increase the irradiance from 250 to 500 uh, to 750 to 1000, as you can see, as we increase, what will happen to the curve? You can see it's going up, up, up. Okay, so you can see that the value of current here, instead of here, it increased to here, increased to here, increased to here. So as the irradiance increases, the value of current increase, increase. Uh, in this case, when we are keeping the load constant, okay, we are just changing the irradiance. Now, what about the voltage? You can see the voltage as the irradiance increases, you can see voltage increased by a very small value so what we learn here is that as the irradiance increases the current increases and by a very large value and the voltage increases by a small value so what is the effect what is the effect of this on the power you can see this is our power at a 400 watt 600 100 and 1000 as you can see as the irradiance increases from 400 to 1000 you can see that the total power increase you can see this is the peak power increased to much higher values so what is the effect of irradiance it increases the current increases the voltage and in the end it will increase the total power okay now we would like also to see what is the effect of temperature on the vi curve you'll find that as the temperature increases what happens to the system okay so as the temperature increases you will find something which is really really interesting as the temperature increases the current increases you can see this is the first temperature at uh, zero celsius degree zero celsius degree and second curve at 25 celsius degree and third curve at 50 celsius degree so as the temperature increases, the current increases. You can see increases, but by how much? A very small value, very small increase in current. Okay, but what about the voltage? 
when the temperature increases the voltage decreases or it, uh, reduces the voltage the increasing in temperature reduces the voltage so as you can see we were at 0 Celsius degree 25 Celsius degree and 50 Celsius degree so as you can see voltage starts decaying so what will happen here you will see that current when temperature increases the current current I will increase by a very small value however the voltage will decrease by a very large value so in the end the power is equal to voltage multiplied by current okay voltage decreased by a large value current increased by a small value so in the end the power will decrease okay so what is the effect of temperature temperature will decrease the output power okay similar to here you can see that the current increased by a very small value very very small value as the temperature increase however the voltage decreases too much when the temperature increase so in the end the temperature is a bad thing for us okay now if we look at the uh, power characteristics here at zero Celsius degree very small temperature and here at 75 Celsius degree you can see that the power curve goes down okay so as a irradiance is an important factor or insulation important factor that will produce more power however the um, a temperature is a bad thing for us because it decreases the output power okay so in this lesson we discussed more about solar panels we discussed the vi characteristics uh, we discussed the, the um, effect of temperature and um, irradiance and we understand more about the uh, data sheet of the uh, solar panels Okay.